Hello and welcome back to the Invincible. I wanted to take time and read the comic that we managed to put together. Filth Base Archives. The USCA Condor, one of the Cosmo Solidar Alliance flagships, makes an emergency landing on Ridges 3. During the prolonged repair, part of the crew sets out to scout the planet. Members of the Alliance explore the metal city. The Alliance men carry mysterious samples out of the tun tunnel. Unexpectedly, the Alliance machines turn against their own masters. Dragonfly en route. The Dragonfly, a small research unit of Interplanetary Commonwealth, with a crew of six, travels the distant regions of space. After visiting many worlds and exploring numerous planets, the research mission comes to an end. However, on the way home, there's one more task waiting for the crew. Despite the risk, Astrogator Novik undertakes the extraction of a rare and extremely valuable mineral himself. Novik gets the mineral, but at the cost of a broken leg and immense pain. The Astrogator's accident doesn't stop the crew from happily celebrating the end of the research cycle. It was a time of creating deep bonds and feeling unstoppable. Victorious, they set course home and go for a well-deserved rest in the hibernation chambers. Reaches free issue. The Dragonfly crew is awakened from hibernation in emergency mode after the ship came close to a mysterious planet, Regis Free. Despite their evident concerns, Novik doesn't immediately reveal the details of this unexpected mission. Regis Free appears to be of no research value, yet the Commonwealth's rival faction, the Alliance, is sending its most powerful unit there, the USCA Invincible. Although the planet has desolated and lifeless surface, its oceans are teeming with life that for some reason didn't move to land during the process of evolution. Crew members take a commemorative photo with a living aquatic organism. Before the radio contact disruption, the Commonwealth probe detected nothing strange, except an unusually strong EM field. Astrogator Novik decides to send Dr. Yasna to the planet's surface in order to find the crew. While looking for companions, Yasna comes across metal bushes and she is suddenly paralyzed by a terrible headache. Dazed, she stumbles and falls off a cliff. Yasna regains consciousness from her fall and sees a cloud of metal flies. Lost. Yasna, the dragonfly's astrobiologist, wakes up all alone disoriented and amnesiac in an unfamiliar place. She hopes that someone is still receiving her messages despite the connection issues. Yasna discovers that she is on a desolated planet called Regis Free. Wanting to learn more, she heads to a nearby camp of her crew. When the challenges arise, Yasna handles it with due caution and prudence. The head injury appears to be serious. Yasna blocks out again. The camp. Yasna manages to reach the camp but encounters only an unresponsive anthrobot. In one of the tents, Yasna finds Dr. Krauta, who is in a deep stupor. Using cable from Krauta's radio, she regains contact with Astrogator Novik. Yasna helps Novik reboot the anthrobot so it can take care of Dr. Krauta. Yasna finds Dr. Marit, but it's too late to save her. Moved by Marit's death, Yasna decides to return her friend's body to the lander. Yasna encounters another crew member, Koval. He's alive, though he exhibits symptoms of the same stupor as Dr. Krauta. Yasna carries him to the lander. Yasna restarts the Commonwealth's probe, which from now on accompanies her in further journey. She also decides to give the device a new name. The last man. The lander returns to the dragonfly with Artie and secured crew members on board. Yasna talks to Novik about the future of cybernetics. She is concerned about the rapid development of autonomous systems. 
According to her, robots can quickly become a threat to humans. Jasna doesn't find Dr. Gorski in his last known position. To continue the search, she enters an area with limited radio coverage. Jasna recalls that she saw similar metal bushes before, at the very beginning of the mission, just before the accident and her memory loss. Jasna finds Gorski's rope. She slides down, but it gets stuck a few meters above the ground. Having no better choice, she follows Novik's advice and descends on the probe. The city. Yasna encounters unusual metal structures. She refers to them as the city. Earlier the sand on the probe led to its damage. Yasna helps Novik repair the machine. After a laborious search, Yasna finally finds Gorski. However, he is immobilized, injured and unconscious. It turns out that his blood saturation is dangerously low. Yasna decides to break procedures and give Gorski her oxygen. She then carries him to an open area so that Novik may send the lander to rescue them. Yasna sets up the relay necessary for landing procedure. Suddenly, the ground collapses under her and Yasna falls into the very depths of the city. Yasna loses strength and hope to ever go back. She unexpectedly meets Dr. Kauta, who helps her escape from the underground. Yasna manages to regain contact with Novik. She also realizes that the lack of oxygen has caused her hallucinations. The Alliance In the city, Yasna encounters a large machine, walking antimatter cannon that belongs to the Alliance. She, she tries to sneak past it, but the antimatter detects her. In the end, Yasna miraculously manages to survive. Yasna finds information about the Alliance's field base. After colliding with the antimat, the probe sustained permanent damage, so Yasna decides to retrieve its electronic brain. Novik lies about Dr. Gorski's death in order to convince Yasna to leave the Metal City. Yasna manages to drive out the city in the abandoned Alliance rover. During the storm, Yasna hides in a cave. Exhausted by recent events, Yasna falls asleep in her hideout. In the morning, she leaves the city in search of a clearing to land Hopper. Ignoring Novik's objections, Yasna heads out to the Alliance's field base to see seek help. Field base. Yasna reaches the Alliance's base and approaches their units with hope. It soon turns out that the field base is empty. Yasna finds a geological study by the Alliance, which reveals that the planet once hosted life on its lands. Yasna stumbles upon research on aquatic organisms. They turn out to be fish, similar to those on Earth, except they possess a unique organ capable of detecting electromagnetic waves. Yasna learns that after she gave up evacuating, Novik used the lander to take Korsky out of the city. Left alone on the planet, Yasna is both angry and happy. Yasna discovers the destination of the last convoy that left the field base. She sets off after realizing that there may be a chance to find other people. Yasna arrives at the excavation site, where one of the discovered objects catches her eye. Unlike the others, this one resembles a robot. Convoy. When Yasna locates the convoy, she finds out that everyone is dead. There had to be a fight beforehand. The antimat logs show that the Alliance machines turned against their masters. The Alliance was particularly interested in the fruits growing out of the metal bushes. Yasna decides to get some of the Commonwealth's research. The previously inactive antimat turns on and destroys a robot carrying jars of fruits. However, the deadly machine ignores Yasna and shuts down again. While searching the convoy's vehicles, Yasna discovers that fruits can fly and generate an electromagnetic field. The Allies Alliance called them flies. Yasna finds an active Alliance probe, which from then on accompanies her on her further journey. In one of the transporters, Yasna discovers containers with flies. Wanting to see how they work, she inadvertently lures a huge swarm of microbots. 
While escaping, Yasna is knocked unconscious, but memories of her first encounter with the cloud come back to her. Yasna notices the silhouettes of living people near the balloon. Even though Novik doesn't believe her, Yasna goes there. After analyzing the balloon logs, Yasna confirms the presence of humans in the area. She also discovers the potential location of their hideout. Survivors Yasna meets an armed man who takes her prisoner. The stranger la leads Yasna to his hideout, where she meets two other men in a state of dead stupor. Both fell victim to the cloud. Yasna provokes Rohitra to talk to her and persuades him to that she is innocent. After waking up, Yasna discovers that Rohitra doesn't remember her. She sets off alone towards the condor, leaving Rohitra in the hideout. Yasna finds the evacuation transporter with remaining survivors, all dead after they failed to reach the condor. It appears that Rohitra is waiting for help that will never come. Yasna returns to Rohitra and gives him the sad news. There's no point in waiting, no one will come to save them. The enraged man provokes a fight with the cloud. Rohitra and Yasna fight the cloud, using a force field and antimatter cannons. Despite many losses, Cloud manages to break through the field, so they are forced to flee in a damaged saucer. Condor The saucer crashes near the condor and Yasna is knocked unconscious. After waking up, the scientist discovers that she is alone. Rohitra, who already boarded the ship, is not willing to help Yasna, so she must find a way to the upper deck on her own. Once she reaches the condor's bridge, Yasna refuses to help Rohitra fight the cloud with the Cyclops. To Rohitra's utter shock, the cloud defeats the Cyclops. Rohitra proposes a nuclear attack on the cloud, but Yasna manages to dissuade him from this idea. Yasna boards the lander after throwing away the jar of flies. And that is my story of the Invincible. Thank you very much. Stay alive. And see you soon. Bye.